everybody. Joy here. It's the next day. <laughs> what day is it? Is it Saturday the 14th? Well, yesterday couldn't have been Friday the 13th. My calendar's last year. So I don't know what day this is. Alright, it's Saturday, January 13th. As you can see, I have on my new whatever it is. I want it to be a dress because I really like it. But the problem is the armholes clear down here. I know, pardon my underwear. The armholes clear down here. I could get in it twice. I know. I cut it out smaller than it said I was supposed to need. Smaller. I checked the knit rule on the back of the pattern. Now listen, this is why you have to be patient when you're learning to sew. Because every fabric's different, you get all kinds of different results, and you just have to be patient. Now, the good thing about this is, it's not too small, and I can fix it, hopefully. I have no more fabric, unless I cut the bottom off, which I may. The longer piece you have in a knit, the heavier it is. And the heavier it is, the more it drags, you see, the more it hangs. Now, I don't have any stabilizer here, so I'll have to invent some. But I will stabilize the neck, front and back, so it won't stretch and it won't sag. I will take the shoulders up at least an inch. An inch on each side will be two inches total. I mean, this thing is just so big in the arms. I will take it in two inches, not just one seam allowance, but a two inch seam allowance, so that'll be four inches on each side all the way down. It's a shame I didn't know this to start with because I don't have any fabric left to make the sleeves with. So, um, cutting these little strips off the side and the shoulders, I don't think that's going to help me get sleeves, so I may have to chop the bottom off of this. But if I do, it's going to be under the pink. <laughs> then I'll be able to get sleeves. We shall see. <laughs> Did you notice yesterday in my video, I mean, not only the, the super mess, I mean, I, I've moved out 90% of this room. These two tables I was leaving here to start with, but I have moved out almost everything in this room. I was going to leave the ironing board until later because I don't have room for two ironing boards in the other house, so I was going to send it to Goodwill, you know, when I was done moving. Uh, these two tables are permanent. They have to stay here. The cutting table, I was going to sell it. So, it's just an absolute mess up here. Um, I vacuum all the time. <laughs> I keep thinking, oh, maybe if I vacuum. <laughs> it doesn't help. <laughs> it doesn't help at all. <sighs> what a mess. But I'm still happy because I'm sewing. And pardon my underwear. I know, I know. Looks like a bag lady. But I like this. I think it's super cute. So when I get all the fullness out of it, and I decide if I want it long or if I want it short, I think probably short. And that way I can get some sleeves out of it. So I'll come back after a while. Oh, I was going to ask you, did you notice yesterday that my rulers, all those rulers that you saw me playing with, all my ducks, they were going to Goodwill. They were in the Goodwill box. <laughs> Thank goodness Jerry decided before they went to Goodwill that we were going to keep the house. And we're still going to keep it today. He's, for, he's in his right mind again. He's just amazed. His blood pressure is still too low. But it's not as low as it was. And his brain is functioning. He, he even kept saying, there's something wrong with my brain. I'm just so foggy. There's just something wrong with my brain. Well, if your brain isn't getting any blood, that could certainly cause some fog. Um, or even worse, <laughs> I thought the man had dementia. It was scary. It was really scaring me what was wrong with him. So now he's still on two pills, metoprolol, and his blood pressure is still not even up to normal. So I'm wanting him to get off of that too. So I said, please call your doctor and see if you could just take that once a day instead of twice a day, and I'm walking on my dress nightgown. But did you notice? Before my video was over yesterday, my rulers were back on the wall. Now, they're not on the wall right. That's not the way they're going to stay. But if there was a hole there and I could fit a little tiny skinny nail in the hole, 
I stuck a ruler in it. <laughs> because I'm still going to wait. I'm going to wait until we go back up there and we come back and we're for sure, for sure, for sure. And Jerry says it's absolutely for sure. Don't even think about it. We're keeping this house. But um, until then, I always said we could set up a tent in the desert and I could figure out a way to put a sewing room in that dude. <laughs> I made a house out of a cardboard box when I was a kid that a refrigerator came in. And I took it out in the front yard and I built little cardboard cabinets in it, a little cab cardboard kitchen sink, and a kitchen table and chairs. <laughs> I didn't sew then, but if I had sewn then, I'd have put a sewing room in that box. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> hey, did you notice Lucy changed her clothes? How about that? <laughs> This is a blouse I made years ago. This is a Peggy Sager's pattern that I really, really like. I redid it to, you know, with all my fixes. But I put a button on top of a button. So it's a green button on top of a blue button. So how fun is that? So yes, I've taken it in at least probably an inch and a half on each side. I took it in three quarter inch plus three quarter inch, an inch and a half. I raised the shoulders, inch and a half. And you can see there's still plenty of room for me in here and tons of room on the sides. I still have no idea what I'm gonna do about the sleeves. <laughs> I may end up making it sleeveless if I can get it close enough and I can get the armhole small enough that I'm not, you know, my underwear isn't falling out the sides. Oh, sinuses. Mm. I don't have the flu anymore. Just allergies. Trying not to sneeze. All right, so you know how many years I've been sewing. You know how much pattern fitting I've done. You know how much Palmer and plushing I've done. And I still have quite a ways to go to get this garment to fit me. So back to the drawing board. <laughs> ta da! Ta da! Ta da! Third try on. <laughs> My girlfriend Billy used to live in try on. That's the truth. T R Y O N Oklahoma. So here's the deal. Third try. I took it in two, I cut two inches off of each side. So I'm up to like six inches cut out of this. Is that right? Two, four, six, something like that. A lot. I could mean, pull it clear out here. So, I've got the sleeve a whole lot closer. I'm not falling out the sides anymore. Uh, the neck has to be fixed because, you know, it gets deformed when you sew it deeper than you're supposed to. So, I'm going to go have lunch because it's 1 o'clock. Now, my husband cooked breakfast. <sighs> the bacon looked like... One of the belts I just gave away to Goodwill. I think it was crocodile or something. <laughs> I said, honey, I think you cut this bacon a little too long. <coughs> he said, well, I cut it in half and I couldn't keep the bacon flat in the pan. So he got out a potato masher and he mashed the bacon in the pan. <laughs> Are you in my way, Lucy? You know, this is Lucy. Let's put you over here. Because somebody called me Southern. They said, you're like a Southern Lucy. And so I named her Lucy. So this is the third try. I like it. Now I have some little strips of fabric that were left from the very, very bottom of this piece of fabric. I'm liking it long. It's not going to be able to have much of a sleeve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to like sew a band around the sleeve. I've never done it before, but I figure how hard can it be? <laughs> and then it will be kind of sleeveless. So, you know, put a blanket over your shoulders if, you, if you're really wearing it as a nightgown. <laughs> Although, I think I'm wearing it as a dress because I like it. I think it's super cute. I like it. And so, if you wear it as a dress, all you need is a topper. And I have lots of toppers. Remember the toppers we did? Everybody made toppers, and I probably made, I don't know, six, seven, eight of them. And I think I made a black one. And it would just go fine over this and tie it. It has a tie, you just tie it in the front. So I could wear that with it. 
you know, if it wasn't 20 below like it is today, <laughs> I'll be back after a while when I come back up to do the whatever I do, the armholes. <laughs> so here's my dress. I've decided I want it to be a dress. It is so, so comfortable. I've got the armholes down to a decent size. At least it's not down to my waist anymore. <laughs> This and this is all the fabric I have left to make some something for the sleeves. That's why I'm thinking bands. But I'd really love to have the pink in it somehow. So we may be doing some attaching strips together. We shall see. <laughs> but I wanted to tell you real quick. I've been reading all your comments on the video that I put up this morning. I just love you guys so much. Oh, thank you, thank you. I feel, I feel like I'm in my right world again. In my right, my, I thought I had dementia myself, y'all. <laughs> I feel like I'm in my right mind again. Oh, Jerry's just, he's just perfect today. He's just perfect. I'm just so excited. His blood pressure's still a little low, and he's still on metoprolol twice a day. And I'm wanting him to call his doctor and see if he can get off of that, or at least just take it once a day. So, because we need normal blood pressure around here because that's how your brain works, right? <laughs> so, I wanted to tell you, I've been reading your comments, and as always, I give people the wrong impression about things. We did buy the house near Tulsa. It's near Tulsa, Oklahoma. It's just south of Tulsa. It's in a town called Mounds. You know, like candy bar Mounds? Mounds, Oklahoma. And we have done a lot of work there. We have fixed some cabinets. We made a new cabinet in one bathroom. We've replaced some doors in the kitchen. We replaced some doors in the former movie room. I uh, had the whole entire upstairs painted, part of the downstairs painted. We had the whole outside of the house painted. We had the whole garage painted. We've done lots and lots of work there. And we have no intention of selling it or moving out of it. We'll just call that my house and call this his house. <laughs> They're both, both of our houses. Jerry loves it up there. He loves it. He is very close to my nephew. My nephew Jeffrey. My nephew Jeffrey has been the general contractor who's helped us get the painters and the, and the wood people and the, everybody that's done everything. And we're just really, really close to Jeffrey and his wife Felina. And uh, they come over a lot. They've been to dinner twice there. Uh, my girls haven't been to my house for dinner in years and years and years and years and years. His daughter, mm, eight, ten years since she's ever been to one of our houses. Yeah, my daughter will come. Like you saw, she came for when Jerry was in the hospital, but she never will stay. I don't know, just beg her and beg her, but she just doesn't. So I don't know. What that's all about. I can't fix that. I've given that all to the Lord. It's his problem, not mine. I can't fix it. But I just wanted to tell you that we're going to have to, we've had two houses for years and years. We had two business, well, we had one business in two towns. So we had a house in Edmond, Oklahoma, and we had this house down here because we had a business location here. We had a business location up there. We sold our business. Three years later, we sold the two commercial buildings. So we sold our extra home that was up there. It wasn't really for sale, but somebody wanted to buy it. So Jerry said, go up there and get the house sold, Joy. <laughs> so y'all remember that saga. So what was that? Three years ago, maybe? And so now we just have two houses again. And it's okay. They're the same distance apart, two and a half hour drive, same distance apart, but closer to my daughter in Edmond, Oklahoma. Much closer to Edmond from that house than this house. I know, this is two and a half from our old house that we used to have, and it's two and a half from this new house that we have, but it's different for her because she's much closer to the newer one. I, I, Y'all figured that out in your head. <laughs> we do have to bring some things back, like the recliners. We were going to get the recliners, sell the recliners on Marketplace, but they go here. That's Jerry's great big movie screen room right outside here. And um, that's where the recliners go. So if we're staying here, the, the screen's still there. Jerry's going to keep it with the house. 
The screen's still there, the projector's still there, everything's still there. So we just gotta bring the recliners back. We need to bring the kitchen table back because the kitchen table was actually specially built to fit in the dining room here. And um, it fits anywhere, in anybody's house, but it was built to fit in this house exactly, the exact length and the exact width with the eight chairs. So we will bring it back. We've already found one to put up there. So don't worry about that. I don't have to move back everything. <laughs> but I don't have to move anything else from here to there. So that's very exciting. All right, let's get back to my garment. I am going to measure the sleeve openings now. And right here, make sure they're still round. It looks like I'm going to have to narrow the back shoulder of hair and figure out if I can get a strip wide enough to sew it around and just make it like a band. I'll be back to show you that if I can figure out how I want to do it. <laughs> okay, this is like take 20. <laughs> I put the bands on the sleeves. Now, I don't have surgery with black thread. <laughs> I have a surgery, but I don't have black thread. So I'll surge the seam inside here, and that'll make the seam go away so you can't see it. But I think that looks okay. Oh, what did I spill on it? Oh, brother. I went downstairs and had a sip of Jerry's shake. Jerry made a shake. Jerry made breakfast. Jerry's back. <laughs> Except he's lost his cell phone. <sighs> so I've got to go help him find his cell phone. Um, it's not ringing. And... We used find my on my phone, but my phone found my phone and showed me where it was. Brilliant. <laughs> anyway, this is the sleeves, the way I'm going to do them. And then I'm just going to fold the neck under and sew it and finish the neck and clean up the shake on, the, on my chest here. <laughs> I'll be back. So it's Sunday now. Let me see, what's the year, what's the day? It's a Sunday, January 14, 2024. Yes, and me and my new dress, my almost done dress, are still here. I have to finish the neck, but other than that, this is done. And some of you have said, you look like you've lost some weight. Well, I have, but some is the key word, it's not a lot. <laughs> Maybe five pounds. But, um, I'm still using the same sizes that I've always used because, you know, my weight's up five, down five, up five, down five all the time. So, it's not that big of a deal. But Jerry's lost ten. And thank goodness he's putting it back on now that he's eating again. Eating! Yes! Oh my goodness, you cannot imagine how little he has been eating. It has been very, very nerve-wracking for me. And my nerves are easily racked, <laughs> as anyone who knows me knows. I'm good today, though, because I've been sewing. We have a new problem, and it's a big problem. You know, we have an RV that we want to sell. It's a beautiful RV. It's a 2020 Newmar Dutch Star, and it's perfect. You know, my husband's a perfectionist, and it's perfect. There's absolutely nothing in it that needs to be fixed or tweaked or painted or it, it's just perfect. And we want to sell it because we have two homes now and we're not going to be traveling anymore in an RV. The most of the places we traveled was down to NIRBC to get something fixed in the last two RVs and a little bit on this one. So we just, we don't, I never did want an RV. I never, except the idea for getting it was for me to take it to my daughter's house and park in her backyard and then maybe I could stay there a month you see and that never happened and and then traveling to other states and faraway places neither one of us is into that Jerry loves it here I love it here I like to be at home home is my favorite place so we are selling it so Jerry had taken his cell phone and we completely moved out it's like another whole house y'all um, completely moved out, it's 44 foot long, completely moved out all the cabinets and the cabinets kept reproducing like they were having babies and we kept moving out. I think we moved out about five times. <laughs> now it's all on my kitchen floor to be dealt with and that's where we found the fabric the other day, remember? So Jerry took his camera and took a whole bunch of pictures because we're getting ready to put it on RV Trader. 
and he took pictures. He took over 50 pictures of the chairs in the chairs out, the slides in the slides out, you know, all of the doors open in the bays and took all, all, all the pictures. Well, the last thing he remembers is taking a picture of the ice chest. On the outside of the coach, you open one of the doors and there's this great big ice chest in it. You pull the drawer out and there's this big ice chest. That's the last thing he remembers taking a picture of. And that's the last he remembers of having his cell phone. And that was two days ago. This is Sunday. He didn't have it Saturday. He didn't have it all day Friday. He lost it on Friday. I think he lost it Friday. So all Friday afternoon, all day yesterday, and so far today, we are looking for a black cell phone and every place we look for it is black. The bays in the RV are black. <laughs> the shelves in the bar are black, you know, oh. And even have walked around looking in the fallen leaves on the ground. So we don't know what happened to his cell phone. We can't put the RV up because we don't have the pictures. And he's very upset with himself for losing it. And there's some way you can find a phone. And so he said, take your phone and see if you can find my phone. <laughs> so I took my phone and I told it to find that phone number. It found my phone and showed me it was here on this table in this sewing room. Brilliant. I, I really don't see how artificial intelligence could take over a restaurant, never mind the world. It is unbelievable how unintelligent this AI is. You know, they all have it now. Anytime you go to Amazon or you go to Walmart or you go to anywhere, they have an assist, they call it a virtual assistant. Well, the virtual assistant is so ignorant. I cannot understand that question. You type too many words. You need to type fewer words. I can't understand that. And you know, the sentence is five words long. <sighs> it does understand, I want to talk to a human being. <laughs> it understands that. <laughs> now, a human being may not speak English, so you can understand it, but any human is better than one of those machines. I don't know. If they're going to take over the world, they better improve them first. I'm going to let you go. I've got to go help Jerry find his cell phone. And I'll be back after a while. This is Sunday afternoon. It's already 1.20. And I'll finish the neck. And you've pretty much already seen it on me. It's just the neck isn't finished yet. But I'll get it finished. And then I'll put it on. I don't think I'm even going to hem the bottom. You know, you don't have to hem a knit. It doesn't ravel. Knits don't ravel. Just finished lunch with my wonderful... Well, husband, I got a hug. I got a hug. I mean, he was so, so different. Mm. I'm just so happy that my husband's back. And here's the thing. He lost his cell phone two days ago. So, the first place we both looked, he looked in his truck, and he didn't find it there. And when he told me he couldn't find his phone, I went outside and looked in his truck. I looked under the seats. I looked in the back. I lifted up the rug on the floor in the back. I looked everywhere. So we both already looked in the truck. So for some reason, Jerry decided just a while ago to go look in the truck again with a flashlight. And if he had not had that flashlight, he never would have seen it because it's black and his whole truck's black inside. The floor is black, the seats are black, the sides are black. That phone had fallen under the seat and back and was up on its side against like the metal legs or the plastic sides or something. You never, ever, ever would have seen it. And it was a place you couldn't get your hand to feel it. So I've decided Jerry's going to have to have a phone this color, pink, <laughs> or white, or something, so we can find it when it falls under his black seat in his black truck, under the black carpet. So I'm going to finish my blouse now. I'm going to play with it a minute and see if I want to put a band around the neck or if I just want to stabilize it. I don't know how I can stabilize it because none of my stabilizer tape is here. This is when you have to be inventive. What could you invent, Joy? Well, 
it just so happens I left all of my um, big bolts of interfacings and interfacings and stabilizers I left those here in my cupboard I haven't moved them yet what I did move was the little half inch rolls that I have of stabilizer that you can stabilize knits. I have them in woven, I have them in knit, I have them in all different ways. So I figure I can go over there and find a bolt of some knit, what do they call it? It has a name, Fusy Knit. I think it's called Fusy Knit. And I can cut a strip of it and use it to stabilize the neckline. That's my next step. Ta-da! <laughs> See? I found it. It's to use in knit fabric. Does it stretch? Yes. So how does it stabilize? I can't explain that. <laughs> Put it the other direction. It only stretches one way. But it's called Fusy Knit. Rare as hen's teeth. Hard to find. That's why I bought a whole bolt of it. It has another name too. Judy Kessinger sells it under another name, but I don't remember what it's called. But you can watch Judy and find out. How about that? <laughs> so I cut one half inch strips of that fusy knit and I ironed them onto the seam line, which is going to be 3 eighths inch around this neck. So now I have it on to see if it's going to stay or if it's going to sag, bag, or drag. Do y'all ever hear Dolly Parton? Somebody asked her if she was ever going to have any more plastic surgery. And she said, if anything sagging, bagging, or dragging, then I will have to. <laughs> oh, I would totally do that if my husband would let me. Okay, so here we are. Back neck, front neck. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go turn it under because I've got the stabilizer there. Turn it under, sew it. I'm going to fold it down 3 8 inch and then I'm going to sew it and then it will stay stabilized and it won't sag, bag, or drag. I'll be back with this dress all done. <laughs> Almost all done. Everything but the hem. It's too long. I need to hem it up about 2 inches but I like it. I like it very much. As usual, the cover stitch machine wanted to give me fits. Oh, cover stitch machines only have three, they can have three needles or two needles. Mine has two needles and then the lower looper. They can be so difficult. They really can. If you don't use one on a daily basis, you're going to forget the touch and the feel. It depends on the needles, it depends on the thread. You've got to have three threads or four threads. I didn't have black thread here, as you know, so I had to use bobbins and I'm um, trying to figure out how to get three spools of black thread that may not be the same kind of thread. There, you know, so many things can go wrong. But I finally got it in. Good enough for a nightgown dress. <laughs> Tell me what y'all think. I like it. Now that the cover machine, the cover machine, now that the cover stitch machine is set up with its three probably different kinds of black thread, there's a bobbin and two very old spools of black thread on it. And probably not all the same, but I'm going to go around the hem anyway and maybe say a prayer before I start and end. <laughs> and we'll see how good I can do the hem. Start with steam the seam. Oh my goodness, there were some things I left here. I don't know how I need to leave them here. Well, the thing is, I knew it would probably be a long time before we had this house ready to sell. So I thought I'll probably come back here and sew some. So I did leave some things. I left several machines and I didn't leave a lot of thread though. I wasn't thinking thread for some reason. And um, I actually left some steam a seam. Oh, I'm telling you, a knit hem, sewing the knit hem without steam a seam, I don't know how you can even do it. It is very, very hard to make that knit behave. Remember the fusy knit that I cut a half inch? And I put it all around the neck on the inside and I folded it in 3 8 inch. And then I put the quarter inch steam and seam 2 light in there and ironed it down. So the neckline was basically already done. Then I went over to my cover stitch machine to sew it down. 
I'm going to do the very same thing for the hem, but y'all don't care about the hem. <laughs> so show it to us when it's done. It's done. I'll wear it. Of course, you know, it's seven degrees outside today. <laughs> so I won't be wearing it anywhere uh, until spring, probably. But I'm going to be fun to look in my closet in the spring and find this to wear. It'll be fun. Pink and black and white. You know, black and anything I love. Black and blue, black and white, black and red, black and turquoise. I think black and turquoise is my favorite. So, but I really like pink too. So, tell me what y'all were doing. I love your comments. Y'all been so sweet. I know a lot of you are just shaking your heads. Well, you're not the only one. <laughs> so, I'm like, well, we're not selling it, so I don't have to clean it. And I don't have to plug all the holes, you know, where I took out all the nails, hundreds of nails. Actually, most of them were uh, needles. The used needles because they make such a teeny tiny hole. And so I was going to have to plug all the holes and repaint over them. And, I mean, who cares now? We're not selling this place. <laughs> so, you know, there's some peace of mind there. As you know, I only have three more pieces of fabric here in this house. <laughs> so, I don't know if I'm going to do any more sewing. We'll be leaving this house next weekend and going to our other house. And uh, we have a brand new doctor up there, recommended by our neighbor. And um, we have a brand new cardiologist for Jerry to see in February. So, all things work together for good. You know it too, don't you? I'll see y'all soon. But bye for now.